One way to make talking on the radios a bit easier is to have a way to manage all the frequencies you'll use on a flight. Here, we're going to do a VFR cross-country flight from Easton, Maryland to Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'm going to show you one way to organize your frequencies, but other pilots have different methods. We're on the ground at the terminal. The first thing we need to do is pick up the current ATIS. We have two radios here. It's a good practice to use COM2 for your ground-based frequencies. That's ATIS and ground control. We'll start with ATIS, 124.47. Then we'll put in ground, which is 119.07. COM1 is for everything else, the air-based frequencies. So air based up top, ground based below, get it? Tower will go in COM1 active, which is 118.52. And we can find the approach control frequency, 124.55, and set that up on COM1 standby. Though it's not always as clear which frequency to contact approach on for things like flight following. So there's the setup. I actually don't do it this way because the aircraft I did a lot of instruction out of weren't always great at transmitting out on both radios, so I only use COM2 for ATIS and for monitoring guard. While all the frequencies I needed to both transmit and receive on, including ground, I keep up top on COM1. That's just how I got used to it. So we'll first listen to the ATIS. It's active on COM2. On most audio panels, you can push COM2 to listen to it. Sometimes there's a both button which allows you to hear both COM1 and 2. After getting the ATIS, we can turn it off and we'll flip ground to active. Now we want to both talk and listen on ground frequency. So on the audio panel, we twist the mic over to COM2. We'll ask for our taxi instructions and go over to the runway hold short. Once we're at the hold short line, we want to be talking to tower, so we twist over to COM1. Now here's a technique a lot of pilots miss out on. Prior to departure, let's set up the frequencies for our destination airport. We don't need the ATIS and ground frequencies here at Easton anymore on COM2, so we put in the ground-based stuff at Atlantic City. That'll be ATIS and ground. On our arrival, we'll be getting the ATIS first in the air, then after we land, we'll switch to ground. So ATIS goes active, while ground stays on standby for now. You could also opt to put guard 121.5 on active and monitor it in flight. So talking to tower now, we get our takeoff clearance and depart. Easton is a class D airport, so once we climb out above the delta, we're good to switch over to approach, which we programmed into COM1 standby. We can ask for flight following from them, and in the en route phase of our flight, we'll be getting periodically handed off to other approach controllers and use COM1 to talk to them. As we get closer to Atlantic City, we get handed off to that approach facility, the last one we'll be talking to. So we should then put the Atlantic City tower frequency on COM1 standby. As we start our descent down to the field, we'll grab ATIS by pushing the COM2 receive button to listen to the frequency we had set up on COM2 active prior to takeoff. After listening, we can turn off the receive button and switch over to ground active. Soon, we'll get handed off to tower. We'll flip that one active, as we set it up when we were talking to Atlantic City Approach. They'll clear us to land. We line up for the runway, put it down, and are told to exit right when able and contact ground. When we taxi clear the runway boundary, we stop and twist over to COM2. We're now talking and receiving on 2, which is ground, who gives us our taxi instructions. There are plenty of ways to manage your frequencies on a flight, but the most important thing is that you have a system that allows you to have as many frequencies programmed in as early as possible and minimizes the amount of twisting and flipping you'll be doing during the flight. Check out Flight Insight Ground Schools today. We're having a Black Friday sale on all our courses and bundles, including the all access bundle of all eight of our courses, which will take you from private all the way up through CFI. It's the best deal in online aviation training, so don't miss it.